We've already studied the mean, median, and mode. These are measures of central tendency, that is the location around which the data tend to cluster. For example, suppose I plot a small data set and it falls here. And a second one, it falls here. And yet a third one, which falls here. If I put them all together, you can see that they differ in location. This set of data is located in a different position entirely than this set of data and this set of data. But they're equally spread out. There's as much spread in the second one as, as there is in the first and in the third as there is in the first and second. So the idea of the location of the data is dealt with by talking about the mean, median, and mode. But now we want to move to something that talks about the spread or the dispersion of the data. And this leads us to measures of variation, or sometimes called dispersion of data. And these measures will tell us in some sense just how much the data are spread out or packed together. And that's important to know. The first and probably the simplest measure of variation is called the range. The range of a data set is simply the difference between the largest and smallest data values in the set. In other words, the range is the maximum value in the data set minus the minimum value in the data set. It's a relatively crude measure of spread because it doesn't consider any of the numbers in between. It only considers the largest and the smallest. Take an example. Suppose we're asked to find the range of the heights of the people listed in the table below. There are four people with their heights. The first one is supposedly the world's tallest person coming in at 102 inches. And then you've got a couple of other people, but you also have supposedly the world's shortest person coming in at 26 inches. And LeBron James and LaDainian Tomlinson are somewhere in between. To find the range, we don't need to worry about the in-between numbers. We only look at the largest and smallest, the maximum and the minimum. So the range of this data set is simply the largest height, which is 102, and the smallest height, which is 26 in inches. So the range of this data set is 76 inches, which if you're interested in converting would be 6 feet 4 inches. Another measure of variation of a data set is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is defined by this formula, and we use the symbol little s for standard deviation. According to this, the standard deviation is the square root of a fraction, and in the numerator of, of the fraction, you take x minus x bar for every piece of the data x, square that difference, remember sigma means to sum, add them up, and then when you get all those sums, you divide by one less than the number of data points. That's the formula for the standard deviation. Now let's use that formula to find the standard deviation of this data set, 16, 14, 12, 21, and 22. I noticed that the formula has an x bar in it, so we might as well get that out of the way and calculate the mean first. You know how to do that already, so I'll skip over that. The mean comes out to be 17. So x bar is 17. The part I want to focus on is the calculation of the standard deviation. So now I'm ready to build my table. What I do is make a column for the data. So I've got 16, 14, 12, 21, and 22. Looking back at the formula, each data point has the mean subtracted from it. So I'll make a column for that. I'm just going to call that column deviation from the mean. It's simply each data point minus x bar. Well, here are your data points, so all I've got to do is subtract x bar from each one of them. Well, x bar is 17, so I get 16 minus 17, which is negative 1, 14 minus 17, which is negative 3, 12 minus 17, which is negative 5, 21 minus 17, which is 4, and 22 minus 17, which is 5. Those are the deviations from the mean. Once I get the deviations from the mean, I want to square each of them. So I'll make a column for that. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 3 squared is 9, negative 5 squared is 25, 
4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25. So that gives me each of the squared deviations. And the sigma says to add them all up. So now I want to add up all of the numbers in the deviation squared column. And if I do that, 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 16 plus 25, I get 76. So that is the numerator under that square root. Then I want to take the number of data points, which is n, and subtract 1. Well, there are five data points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So I've got 76 over 4 under that radical. 76 over 4 happens to be 19. Doesn't need to come out to be an integer, but it did in this case. And the square root of 19, suppose we round it off to two decimal places, is 4.36. So the standard deviation of that data set is 4.36. Fortunately for us, our Casio FX260 will compute the standard deviation. In fact, the procedure is exactly the same as the one you use for computing X bar, except instead of doing shift 7, which is for the mean, you do shift 9, which is for the standard deviation. So you really don't have to learn a new skill. You just have to remember to use shift 9 instead of shift 7. So let's do it with a calculator. That also means, by the way, that you don't have to do any of these preliminary calculations. You don't have to do the deviation from the mean and the deviation squared because the calculator takes care of all of that. So let's do that. Remember how to calculate the mean. The standard deviation is exactly the same way except you use shift 9 instead of shift 7. So the first thing you do is press on, which clears out any old data. Then you press mode decimal point, which puts the calculator into stats mode. Then you key in each number and press M plus. And you keep doing that until you get to the end. And don't forget to press M plus after you've entered the last data point. And after all that's done, you press Shift 9, which gives you the standard deviation. I mentioned these things earlier when we talked about the mean. I'll throw them up here again, but I've really talked about them already. The fact that if you do shift 6, you can make sure you enter the right number of numbers, things like that. We've talked about that before. This is how you calculate the standard deviation. So let's go back to that problem and actually do this on the calculator. And this will be the keystrokes. You start out with the first, enter it by pressing M plus. Then you go to the second one, enter it and press M plus. Then go to the third and enter it by pressing M plus. Then you go to the fourth one and then you go to the fifth one. And when you've done that, you press Shift 9, which calculates the standard deviation. And to two decimal places, that would be 4.36. It's the same answer we got before, but the calculator did all the hard work. Let's look at this example. A company hired six interns. After four months, their work records show the number of work days missed for each worker. Zero, two, one, four, two, and three. Those are the work days missed for each worker. They want us to find the mean and standard deviation of this data set and round to two decimal places as needed. First thing we need to calculate the mean. And remember, we can go straight to the calculator. You want to press on to make sure everything's cleared. You want to enter mode decimal point to go into stats mode. And then you put in each data point. So you put in the zero, enter it by pressing M plus, put in the 2, enter it by pressing M plus, then you do the same for the 1, the same for the 4, the same for the 2, and the same for the 3. When all the data has been entered, Shift 7 will give you the mean. And the mean comes out to be 2. Now we want to do the standard deviation. The data is already in, so you don't have to enter it again. So all you have to do, if you haven't cleared out the data set, is press Shift 9. And if you do that to two decimal places, you'll get 1.41.
And fortunately, there's nothing different about frequency table data. If you're given a frequency table, you can do the calculations for the standard deviations just like you did for the mean, with the one exception, that is you press Shift 9 instead of Shift 7. Everything else is the same. So for example, if I take this frequency table data that I used in an earlier problem, and I want to calculate the mean and standard deviation, here are the keystrokes, but remember what you do is you press on to make sure all your old data is cleared. You do mode decimal point to put it into stats mode. And then you look at the scores and their frequencies. You've got a 12 to be entered once. You've got a 15 to be entered once. You have a 17 to be entered three times. You have a 20 to be entered three times. You have a 21 to be entered once, a 26 to be entered four times, and finally a 32 to be entered twice. And remember, to calculate the mean, we do shift 7. So x bar is 21.8. Remember, we want the standard deviation, but the data is already in, so all we need to do as long as you don't clear the data out, it's press shift 9. If you press shift 9, you get the standard deviation to two decimal places is 5.98. Something else that's often of interest to us in a problem like this is determining how many standard deviations a value is from the mean. Before we actually continue with this problem, I want to take an aside to talk a little bit about the idea of measuring the number of standard deviations a value is from the mean. That turns out to be very important in its own right, so I want to look at that for a minute and we'll come back to this problem. So suppose this blue bar has a length that represents the difference between two values, maybe one of those values is the mean. And what if I know the length of the standard deviation is the length of each of those red, I'll call them rulers. I can measure the length of that blue bar in rulers by taking each one and putting them up along the blue bar. And if I do that, let's just clear up the mess a little bit. What I'll see is that there are one, two, three, four rulers required to measure the length of that blue bar. So what we'd say is that the blue bar is four standard deviations long. That's the idea they we're trying to get across here. And of course if you change the length of the ruler, say for instance that the green bars here are the rulers, then you have the green rulers instead of the red rulers. So if you take the green rulers and measure, what you will find, and again I'll clean it up a little, is that it takes three green rulers to measure the length of that blue bar. So if we're using a standard deviation the length of a red bar, there are four standard deviations in the length of that blue bar. If we're using the green ruler to measure, then there are three required. That's the idea here, and that's a very important concept. And I guess in wrapping it all up, what I'm saying is, in effect, when we calculate a standard deviation, we're really computing the length of our measuring stick or our ruler. Now let's go back to the problem that we were beginning and use that concept. You want to find out how many standard deviations the highest score is from the mean. So, you look at the highest score, which is 32, and you subtract the mean. The difference between those two numbers is the deviation of the highest score from the mean. Now the question though is how many standard deviations that is. If you divide 10.2 by 5.98, you get 1.71. So the highest score is 1.1 standard deviations from the mean. 
Standard deviation is like a measuring stick. You're measuring how many of them it takes to get from one place to the other.